Today I wanted to look at some more classic soul rhythm guitar and in a way this video is a follow-up to the lesson I did on Rainy Night in Georgia and Cornell Dupree. And I just wanted to look at some more stuff in this kind of style and I thoroughly recommend to anybody wanting to improve their rhythm guitar to learn some tracks such as this one. It's just such a good way of expanding your chord vocabulary whilst working on your groove and on your rhythm. So before I go any further let me play through a bit of the track for you then I'll tell you a bit more about it and we can learn it together. There we are, this track Stand Up, taken from Al Green's 1973 album Call Me. And I think most people agree that this is one of the great soul records, so if you don't already know it, it really is essential listening. And the guitar on this record, and I think most of the great Al Green records, played by a man called Teeny Hodges. And Teeny Hodges is not someone I know a great deal about, other than through just listening to these records. He was an amazing guitar player, it's just such an education in tasteful, interesting, groovy rhythm guitar, just listening to some of those classic Al Green records. So today, as I said, I'm focusing on the track Stand Up, so let's get down to business. We're in the key of E major, and we've got three basic sections to this tune. We've got an introduction, which then crops up a couple of other times later in the track. We've got a verse, and we've got a kind of bridge section as well. But let's kick off with this great intro riff. <laughs> The basic chords that we're outlining here are E, got a bar of E, and a bar of D, and then two bars of B or B7. And what Teeny Hodges is doing is this, it's really based around triad shapes. First of all, we've got a couple of single notes, which is an F sharp to a G sharp on the A string, just 9 to 11 on the A string. And then we've got this E triad, so this is the ninth fret on the D, G, B strings. And if you like, you could think of this as coming out of this chord form. So you've got this E chord, but in the G form. And then we're just doing the same thing, but two frets lower. So that's giving you a D triad and a D chord sound. And then we're heading to B, and just in passing you can hear this. Just a, a couple of passing double stops here. So this is the seventh fret on the A and the D, and you're hammering on to the ninth fret on the A and the D. And you can just about hear that if you listen very closely to the recording. And then we're going to the B chord, and we've got this. So a typical rock and roll blues kind of idea. So it's just a B power chord. And then you're stretching up to the sixth with your little finger. And then we've got this nice little fill. 
Again, this is a, a typical bit of soul or blues language and it's a triple stop kind of a shape and we've got frets 7, 6, 7 on the D, G and B and we're just sliding that shape up two frets and then sliding back again. And this is played over a B bass note and what you're getting here is really a kind of B9 sound and then kind of a B6 sound. You hear this quite a lot in blues. It's in Stormy Monday and all those kind of slow blues pieces. So that's the introduction and it's repeated two times. To the verse and we've got a four chord cycle here let me just show you the chords that we're playing first of all then we'll talk about the groove and the rhythm so we're starting with just a simple E bar chord this is just an A form E chord so fret 7 and then 999 on the A D G and B strings four beats of that then we're going to an E9 chord so frets here are 7 6 7 7 and then seven on top as well if you want to. So we're really going from the, the one chord is E and then we're making that a one seven chord, a one dominant, and that's pulling our ear towards the next chord, which is the four chord. And this is also a dominant seven chord, it's an A7. And just playing that as a regular A7 bar chord in, in the E form. So in terms of frets, we've got five, seven, five, six, five and five another four beats on that and then we've got a d7 so this is kind of a, a flat seven dominant chord which is again fairly common it's kind of a substitute for the normal five dominant chord it kind of pulls your ear back again to the one so here we've got d9 this is the same as the e9 but two frets lower and you can also hear that teeny hodges is adding in this high B note here, which is turning the D9 into a D13. So those are the basic chords. Most important thing here is the groove and the rhythm. And this is probably going to be the trickiest thing to try and get together. So I'm going to suggest, first of all, just holding down the E chord and just working on the groove on that single chord and then when you're ready you can carry it through the chord progression. The basic feel here is just all eight note down strokes in your strumming hand. But what's going to make this come to life is the accents and also the muting that you're going to need to do with your fretting hand and that's really what is going to bring this groove to life. So what I'm hearing on the recording is something like this. So you can hear that beat one is fairly long and then beats two and three are both quite clipped and staccato and you're also accenting those strums, just playing them a little bit harder. So we've got a long beat one and then you're accenting and using some fretting hand muting on beats two and three. So one, two and three and one. So as soon as I've played two and three, I'm just releasing pressure with my fretting hand. and then I'm holding down pressure for beat four and letting the chord ring a little bit longer. So one, two, and three, and three. So important to keep a quite light touch with your fretting hand and also just to keep nice and relaxed with your strumming hand as well. Once you've got the feeling for that, then I think you can take it through the chord progression. So from E, E9, A7, and then when we hit the D9 chord, we're breaking out of that strumming pattern and we're just arpeggiating this chord. So we've got something like that. It's a little bit different each time he plays it, but starting on the A string and then adding in that 13. So that's the basic verse progression and pattern. The 
other section we need to look at, I'm just going to call this the bridge section. And we've got some more interesting chords. So the basic chords we're playing are these. We've got a G sharp minor seven, and then C sharp seven, F sharp minor seven, and then a B seven. So it's a kind of three, six, two, five chord progression. Starting off with this chord voicing here, this is the G sharp minor seven. So I've got a bar across the A, D, G, B, and high E strings at the 11th fret and I'm playing the 13th fret on the D, 12th fret on the B. Got four beats of that. And then moving to the C sharp seven, this is the same as the A7 that we played earlier, but played at the ninth fret. And they got an F sharp minor seven, this is the same as the G sharp, but two frets lower. And then B7, and that's the same as the C sharp seven, but two frets lower. Now, the interesting thing here is the way that Teeny Hodges approaches it rhythmically, and he's just got this really nice arpeggiated rhythm. So it's something like this. We've got... That's what he's playing on the first chord. So arpeggiating the first few notes, and then strumming top few strings and also adding in a little embellishment so we're adding in this 14th fret note on the high E string uh, it's still a minor seventh chord because we're we're doubling up this note that's already in the chord so that's what he's doing most of the time on the first chord and actually if you listen very closely I think I'm sometimes detecting this so rather than playing the G sharp minor seven like this you're playing this kind of chord shape, which appears to be a B, a B major chord shape in the in the C form. But since the bass is still playing a G sharp, it, it gives you that minor seven sound. But you've got the, the flat third in the bass there, so so that's that's an alternative way of playing that first chord in the sequence. Then we're going to the C sharp seven. Very similar thing here. I'm embellishing again with a note here at the 12th fret on the B string. And then the same thing on the F sharp minor 7. And on the B7. And each time Teeny Hodges plays this it's slightly different. So take this as a guide. I think later on in the song it becomes a little bit more rhythmic and strummy on some of these chords. Feel free to experiment with that a little bit. But here's all of that section slowly. And that's really about it. All of those sections are repeated later in the song with some embellishments and some different rhythmic things. But I think it's best if you listen closely to the original recording and you can probably pick up some of those things for yourself. So the gear that I'm using today, and I just wanted to keep things very simple. And you listen to those Al Green records and to Teeny Hodges, and he's not trying to blow your mind with amazing tone. It's just a nice, clean guitar sound. So I'm just using my Telecaster 52 reissue Telecaster going straight into an amp, which is a Fender Deluxe Reverb. And sadly, the Fender Deluxe appears to have just broken. And literally, just as I finished filming the performance at the start of this video, it stopped working. No lights, the valves not coming on, nothing at all. So no idea what's going on there. But when it is working, it's actually a very nice amp. And sometimes all you need to do is plug a good guitar into a good amp, and that will give you everything you need. And don't be afraid to do that. I think particularly these days where everybody seems obsessed with tone and gear and pedals. And yes, I do like all of that stuff as well, but sometimes it can just get a little bit boring and you just want to focus on making music and not worry about all of that stuff. That's all for this video. Tab backing track going to be up on my Patreon page. Pay what you like and you can get access to this tab and tons of other tabs and backing tracks as well. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time.